You're probably sick of hearing the same Instagram growth tips over and over again. Create reels and make them seven seconds and make sure you put too much text so that people have to listen to the video looping while they read it all. Provide lots of value, write long captions. Use trending audios that have less than 15,000 reels already associated with them so that you can get better reach. Post consistently, but that is not what I'm gonna share with you in today's video. The truth is there are some seriously effective methods for growth on Instagram that I don't think get the attention that they deserve. So as they say, let's get into it. All right, my first and honestly, probably most important underrated tip for you is that it's not all about trending audios. I swear Instagram gurus have like an obsession with focusing on using trending audios to increase your reach on your reels, right down to this supposed science about like how many reels you want to have already been made about the sound when you use it. And like, I feel like a lot of that is just kind of misplacing your focus and kind of wasting your time, if I'm honest. All the time spent on that math equation, in my opinion, could be better spent on coming up with quality original content. Since the beginning of this year, my Instagram has grown from around 35,000 followers to now inching towards 100,000. And that is mostly due to my consistent original reels content. Most of my videos are talking head, like I'm speaking to the camera. They're close to a minute and a half long. And lately I haven't been using audios from the Instagram music library at all. Okay, let's just back up a minute and explain what I mean when I'm talking about original versus trendy reels content. I really think of trending reels as kind of like the candy in your Instagram strategy. They're short and sweet and everybody loves them. If you happen to kind of be in the right place, right time, right style of content, you can go viral with this. But in my opinion, they tend to be too short to really teach you anything. And they mostly more so lean towards like inspiration inspirational or aspirational type content. Okay, on the other hand of things, we have original reels. These are more substantial. I like to think of this as like the nutritious backbone of your like Instagram content diet. They're longer, they probably feature you more heavily. It's gonna be like scripted. Really think about it like a mini YouTube video. You're probably providing like education or encouragement or entertainment in some way. And these like really give your existing audience a reason to keep coming back to you. Now, I really do think that a good strategy is gonna have a nice balance of both. I personally lean more towards the original content and just sprinkle in some trendy stuff here and there when I have good ideas for it. But I think the previous approach was really just churning out as many sort of trend-based reels as you could, pointing and dancing, doing lip syncs, that kind of thing. But I really think the underrated tactic is to focus more on original content. I've had some original reels where it's like a mini YouTube video rack up 100,000 views. So you really don't need to rely on chasing trends to get good reach and grow your audience. Here are some other benefits of doing strictly original content and not relying on trending audios. For one, you don't have to worry about your reel not being available in certain countries or regions because of the music copyright laws. Back when I was adding a trending audio to every reel I was making, it would be so frustrating because I would constantly have comments from people in different countries saying that the entire reel was muted for them because that audio wasn't available where they live. Another thing you don't have to worry about if you just skip the trending audio altogether is that you don't need to worry about your reel getting silenced six months down the road when that audio is removed mysteriously from the Instagram music library. I honestly have no idea why this happens, but it's happened to me on a number of occasions where really well-performing reels all of a sudden are completely silenced. And it's not just the background music, the entire reel is muted. If your song that you attach to it gets removed. Also, if you ever want to do brand deals, you actually can't use music from the Instagram music library on branded content because you would need like a separate license for that. Like musicians that allow their music in the Instagram music library haven't allowed people to use it for commercial use. So basically you're gonna need to find other types of music to use on your branded content anyway. And finally, this is more of a opinion kind of a thing, but I really do think that a lot of creators would find that this original more like YouTube approach to reels feels more authentic to them. I think a lot of us struggle with figuring out how we can make trends feel authentic and feel like us. So the TLDR is original reels are really underrated and they actually have a lot of benefits in terms of global accessibility, actually nurturing that relationship with your audience. They're more easily brand dealable and they still have the potential to get pretty high reach. So don't sleep on non-trending reels. The next underrated Instagram growth strategy is carousels. I have to admit that this tip is as much for myself as it is for y'all because I have been 
seriously neglecting just photo content on Instagram, even though I definitely think there is some demand for it. And I've observed a lot of creators having success with this. Just think about it, so many people say that they want to see more photos on Instagram, so who are we to deny that from them? You know, why not try incorporating some more photo carousels into your strategy. But actually I think like I wanna distinguish carousels specifically I think are really effective because of the interactive element. Like in some ways carousels are even more interactive than reels are because you scroll and you watch a reel but with a carousel you scroll and then you actually swipe through it and you determine the pace that you want to consume the content. Now, what is our approach to carousel content in 2023? I think that graphic carousels really had their heyday in 2020 and 2021. I think there is still some space for that, especially if you're an educator or you're trying to share a lot of information. But I think we're actually in an era now where the most effective carousels are really casual and really like a behind the scenes approach. And I think it's Especially carousels can come in handy as a way to nurture your new audience that finds you from your reels and get them more invested in you as a person. I have to shout out my creator friend JC West for sharing this idea with me, but her philosophy is if you have a reel go viral, like you all of a sudden see a lot more views on your latest reel, that's a good time to make a carousel post where you're introducing yourself. So you can include like a few photos of you, you know, that are relevant to your content pillars, showing kind of you in action. And then your caption can be a little bit of an introduction and maybe asking your audience to introduce themselves. That can be a really great way to generate engagement. So I think everybody needs to figure out what carousels can look for them based on your niche and the type of account that you have. But personally, what I'm thinking about doing is definitely incorporating more photo dump kind of style carousels where it's a behind the scenes look at my life. But I'm also playing around with the idea of doing a little bit of graphic carousels here and there. We'll see. They are a lot of work, but I think that they have the potential for a lot of reach if you do them well. Just make sure that you don't fall into the temptation of including like blocks of text. You need to keep them brief and to the point, but they can perform really well. With any content that you're creating on Instagram or across social media, really, it's so essential that you take advantage of what your analytics are telling you. You can use your insights to determine what kind of content you should focus in on and make more of, and what kind of content you might want to retire because it's not that effective for you. My personal favorite software for analyzing your social media metrics is Dash Hudson, who also happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Dash Hudson is probably the most intuitive and aesthetic social media metrics platform that I've ever used. You can easily design your own custom dashboards so that you can see the data that's most important to you as soon as you log in. You can see here inside Dash Hudson, all I need to do is go to the analytics tab and click on Instagram and all of the important stats that I'm looking for are right here. In this panel, I can see my most entertaining content, which is super insightful for helping me figure out what types of content I wanna make more of. You can see your top performing videos, your most engaging posts, and I think this is really cool, your top UGC, so you can keep tabs on what your audience is posting about you. Okay, so Dash Hudson is clearly very helpful for content creators, but this summer they are being even more helpful for all of us because they have released their social media trends report. This report breaks down the biggest shifts in the social media landscape and includes helpful lessons that we as creators or social media managers can learn from the most successful brands in the industry. And the best part is, it's free. You can download the social media trends report by Dash Hudson at the link in my description. So make sure you go check that out. And thanks again to Dash Hudson for sponsoring this video. Okay, another underrated growth strategy, focusing more on your stories. Now I can already hear what you're thinking through the camera. You're thinking, Katie, only my existing followers see my stories anyway. How is this gonna help me grow? And that is true, but in this instance, I'm not using the word growth to talk about the number of followers you have, but rather the depth of connection that you have with your audience, which from a business perspective, definitely does mean growth, you know, like in terms of sales and all that stuff, because you really want to have more than just a surface level connection with your followers who've maybe like seen one or two of your reels. You want to build that loyalty. 
Because here's the thing that we can't overlook. Everybody wants more followers, but what they really need is more loyal followers, more audience members who are actually invested in what you're doing. And I think stories is the best way to build that connection with your audience. It's really a great opportunity to stay front of mind because you can show up in their stories feed every day. And with that direct one-on-one -on -one connection you can get through the DM responses, like, there's really nothing even comparable to that. Like that is huge when it comes to building an authentic relationship. Okay, so let's talk about specifics. Let's get into a tangible strategy for focusing more on your Instagram stories so you can really see that depth of relationship grow, which I really believe will lead to a better conversion rate, like getting more sales, whether that's on your digital products or courses, or even just getting more clicks on like the brand deals you're doing. Okay, so I think it can be a good approach to post three times throughout the day. Once when you first log on, like 9 a.m. kind of thing, once around your like lunch break, so maybe noon, and then once again before you sign off for the day, so maybe like 6 or 7 p.m. Include lots of interaction. Like I highly recommend including polls. I find polls are kind of the best for actually getting people to engage. Question boxes can be good too, but it's just that much more effort for someone to type out a response. So use a poll on like your first slide of the day. Or if you're sharing something where you don't necessarily have a relevant poll, or maybe you just shared a poll sticker, then use that little emoji react sticker because it gives people an opportunity to interact with you and it's just one tap. It's really simple. For all of these little interactive stickers, I highly recommend putting them in like the bottom right hand corner of your story as long as it still looks good just because that's going to be the easiest place for your followers to tap them. You can just kind of picture it right if you're holding your phone and there's a pole in the top left hand corner of the screen, you're not going to bother reaching your thumb around to interact with it. So just put it where it's easy to use. And I think personally, the biggest thing that you can do to really increase your story views is to get people to respond to you via DM. I've really been paying attention to my story views lately and what kind of impacts them because I'm trying to puzzle out the Instagram story algorithm. And my biggest takeaway is that the indicator of whether or not an Instagram story is gonna have higher reach is if I get a lot of DM responses to it. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see an entire video with my theories on the Instagram story algorithm and how you can increase your Instagram story reach because I feel like I have a lot to share on that. But the main takeaway is get people to engage. That is the biggest thing you can do. Get them to reply via DM, to answer your polls, to tap your stickers. That is what's gonna help you reach more of your audience with your stories. And I really think that your story content doesn't have to be like a perfect mirror to what you're sharing in your reels or in your feed content, it can be more of a behind the scenes and casual look. When you really work on this, when you work on building a good story strategy and routine, you have something very powerful, which is daily access to your most dedicated followers who are the most likely to buy from you, to like come to your events, whatever it is. And so you wanna really keep that relationship active and keep that line of communication open because it's much more consistent than like waiting on a viral reel to help you make sales or whatever. So don't sleep on the story strategy. <laughs> the most underrated growth hack of all time really, I think, is putting your viewer or your follower first. This is, I think, honestly, one of the biggest mistakes that so, so many creators make, especially when they're just getting started. And it's basically just creating the content that you want to make instead of thinking about what your audience wants to consume. Let me explain this in a metaphor that I think will help it make more sense. Okay, so if you didn't know, my mom is actually an entrepreneur as well, and she has recently opened a restaurant in the small town where I grew up. And let's just say, hypothetically, this isn't actually the case, that my mom's dream was to open a really authentic, high-end French bakery and also serve like Italian espresso. That's what she really wanted to offer. But where she's opening a restaurant is actually in a pretty like traditional rural Canadian town. Blue collar workers and farmers would probably be the best way to describe the demographic. Do we all think that offering the authentic French patisserie and Italian espresso bar is really gonna go over that well? Eh, probably not, right? If we look at what that market is most likely looking for, probably not a good match for what, you know, my mom hypothetically wants to offer with her restaurant. So instead, she thinks about the target market and she offers home-style cooking, burgers and fries, fish and chips, 
all that kind of thing. Oh, and just, you know, your standard drip coffee. And it's very successful because that is what her customer base is looking for. Hopefully this illustration shows you the importance of offering what your audience actually wants to consume. Now, the beauty of the internet is that you aren't bound by whatever, you know, small town you happen to be in. You don't have to necessarily serve your local demographic. And there are so many different people out there online that you probably can find an audience for the kind of thing you want to create. But nonetheless, it's so important to consider what is their demand for if you're actually trying to build this into a business. You really wanna think about what people want to read, watch, share, engage with, and use that to guide your content creation process. Ultimately, being a content creator is a business, if, if that's what you want it to be, if you don't want it to just be a hobby, right? And so you need to make sure that you have a sound business model and that there is actually demand out there for what you want to offer. So honestly, if there's any advice that you take away from my underrated tips, it's that you want to make sure, especially when you're just getting started out, or if you're thinking about pivoting, that there really is an audience out there for what you're trying to create. That is something that I didn't consider at all for probably like the first five years of making videos. And I think that really held me back because I was just in this mindset of like, well, this is what I want to make. This is how I want to express myself. And there's definitely some value in that. That's good way to practice, but I'm assuming you're here because you want to make this into a business. And so you need to consider essentially like the market conditions when you're creating your content strategy. So I hope this collection of underrated tips has been helpful for you. Honestly, it's just some stuff that I've been thinking more about lately and wanting to incorporate into my strategy more often. If you wanna learn more about my personal strategy for growth on Instagram and how I gained more than 60,000 followers this year, and why I'm kind of intentionally taking a break from it, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this video next. I know it's titled my anti-growth strategy, but I think it'll actually give you a lot of insights around how you can sustainably grow a community on Instagram and the importance of taking breaks when you need to. So make sure you check that video out next. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.